Well, a few years ago, I would have been afraid to ask this question, but now I can ask it because I've had several guests on the podcast who are colleagues of mine who work in this area. Um, uh, have you explored psychedelics? I just did. Which for one? the very first time. Which And by the way, these are all illegal unless in a clinical trial. So don't possess or sell these things. You will go to jail. But which ones did you do? So first of all, it was a awesome experience. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know what I was going to get. And I told the, uh, told the people that were organizing this. I asked for a private, because they do like groups. I asked for a private session. Um, and I got like this really beautiful place to go to. Because they were like, do you want us to do it at your house? I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? You're like, have you seen so, my house? <laughs> I'm like, no. Uh, and I have kids. And I'll be like walking around the house. Like, yeah, what's that, up, that, boys? Yeah. So I... Well, uh, imagine what your kids would be doing. Oh, yeah. yeah. They'll be like, Dad, it's being fucking weird. So <laughs> I uh, I got this beautiful place. And then I still... Had there, And then, the, you know, they say, and I and I agree with this, that to go into it with intention. Right. Right? Like, that. that's like kind of like... If you're not going to do anything, at least do that. Go in. Don't just go like, I want to feel some shit. Like, right. have an intention. Right. So I shared that, which, you know, I won't share, but I shared the what the intentions were and then they I asked them like what am I going to get and they go we found that it's best to tell you afterwards really yes wow uh, so I've never heard of that well this is like I'm not saying it's wrong this I is mean, like the, the week in advance I see right then like the day of they go we're going to give you this first and it's an African plant called Kana okay K A N N A. Oh yeah, that's a serot. So you have um, neuro neuromodulators, dopamine, serotonin, uh, acetylcholine, etc. They do a bunch of different things all over the brain and body. I but Kana increases serotonin. I think it's a serotonin yeah. dump. It right, is right, which is a lot like what psilocybin does. It is so. Yeah. But the thing about uh, this particular, um, is it? It says specific. Oh, it looks like dopamine also. So MDMA stimulates dopamine and serotonin. Release. Well, they call this one the love one. Yeah, that sounds. So it sounds like an em empathogen, mm -hmm. um, which MDMA is, and um, yeah, Kana is a very interesting compound. Well, I wasn't just done after that, buddy. Oh, that was just no. the that was the base coat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then I comedians got, comedians go hard into the paint. Yeah. yeah. yeah then that. I got a I got a second. Uh, dose of Kana. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, a few years ago, I would have never brought this up um, because the, this stuff was considered super at the edge, mm -hmm. right? Um, academics losing jobs and that kind of thing. I mean, the, the counterculture movement of the 60s and 70s obviously focused on psychedelics. Yeah. Um, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, yada, yada. But meditation and psychedelics were synonymous back then. What happened in the 90s and 2000s is a lot of laboratories took meditation seriously as an exploration lot of good science to support meditative practices as ways to improve focus mainly mm -hmm. a lot of people think it's a relaxation exercise it actually improves focus we can talk about this psychedelics were still kind of earmarked as you know drugs that were illicit then what's happened in the last really five to seven years is thanks to the incredible work of matthew johnson at johns hopkins university and a guy named robin carthart who used to be over in uh, london but who's now at uc san francisco clinical trials started on psilocybin and then the MAPS group out in California. So this is all done legally, clinical trials with federal taxpayer money done at universities, major universities, looking at the antidepressant, long-term antidepressant effects of things like psilocybin, MDMA, MDMA in particular for trauma. Um, and the data are astounding, right? 66% of people who do, you know, these two MDMA sessions spaced appropriately in conjunction with a clinician, you know, you got someone there to, to support um, them show you know long-term depression relief this kind of thing we did an episode with a guy named dr nolan williams who's one of these in, incredible incredible doctors at stanford he's a triple board certified neurologist psychiatrist who's doing work on ibogaine um there's another psychedelic uh, psilocybin all the various um, psychedelics and he really emphasized you know that obviously kids who are developing should stay away from this stuff i, I would say you know before you're 25 you might want to think seriously or really you know, reconsider because the brain is still plastic. But what's very clear is that these compounds, they provide a dump of these neuromodulators like dopamine or serotonin in particular ways. And in those very unusual states of sometimes hallucinations, but different modes of thinking, the brain learns new associations. And in, on MDMA, people 
can see something that is very traumatic that's been looping in their head or that they've been hiding from themselves and see it from a new perspective. Yeah. And that the, and this is really important. People think that everything that happens, it happens during the psychedelic session, but that's just the opening of neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is just a process. The question is, where is it directed? And so here's the double-edged sword. If someone takes psychedelics and just pays attention to the music that they're listening to, there might be a few insights there, but it is sort of waste of pla it's a waste of plasticity if you ask me because there's a real opportunity to ratchet through some of the, the more challenging things you can use an intention other times people will just kind of let what comes up come up through the subconscious like the freudian psychoanalyst would would have done um i i'm very direct about this you know i did psilocybin and some lsd when i was in high school and college completely regret it did not have good experiences some weren't bad but had some bad experiences just do not recommend it at all. Why? I just wasn't intentioned about it. I wasn't in a place to really make sense of what was going on. Mm -hmm. And I think that the brain is so plastic until about age 25 anyway, that there's a lot of good work that can be done through just insight, hard work, et cetera. Um, as an adult, I've done three, um, in conjunction with an MD, uh, three different MDMA sessions, um, each of which was very different and each of which really helped me move through a lot. A lot of forgiveness, a lot of being able to feel. I used to be able to feel things like in my head, I could have emotions and waist down, I could feel, but sort of my body didn't feel like a coherent whole when I'd have an emotion. And I could, like, I was really good at packing down emotions. Yeah. And then, you know, how, and they erupt one way or another. Right? Yeah. So that all largely got resolved. Uh, you know, um, not obviously not from, I'm far from perfect. I, I always say I have 3,000 pet peeves and about 3,000 flaws to match those pet peeves. Mm -hmm. So they go to hand in hand. And then the second session, was just, I finished it out. It was very mellow and it was just all about acceptance. And then the third session really was a deep dive into some complicated stuff that I've been trying to navigate more recently. And I would say in every one of these cases, it matches exactly what the clinical literature shows, which is that people gain new insight in positive ways that allow them to be more empathic towards others, but more importantly, more empathic towards themselves.